Long-awaited PlayStation exclusive is finally here. God of War on PC. Was the waiting worth it? Let's look closely and see what we have here. The fact that God of War still holds up after its release in 2018 speaks volumes about the great work Santa Monica Studio have done with this not really a reboot but not really a sequel game. When it dropped on PlayStation as an exclusive, it rightly received critical and fan acclaim the world over. Fast forward to 2022 and that same experience is now available to PC users in a port that's just as good, if not better, than its PlayStation counterpart. If you for some reason quite young or never had a chance to experience God of War originally on PS2, some information for you now. Set an undefined period of time after the original PlayStation 3 series of the same name, God of War is an epic single-player narrative driving game testing the limits of both Kratos and his son Atreus through every part of this stunningly realized world. And what a world it is too. Brief taking visual and lighting effects help immerse you in every part of this stunning landscape and combined with the refined, evolving gameplay system make it a worthy arrival to PC this year. Even as early as the opening credit sequence where the menu screen seamlessly transitions from a static shot of desolate forest to Kratos chopping a tree down in a cutscene, this is a game of sheer beauty. On PlayStation it looks fantastic when it released, and still stands up to this day. On a powerful PC rig, the graphics are pushed even further, with textures that's much more sleek and the frame rate pushed to incredible haze. While this is still the same exact game, even those who have played before should check this out again on PC, if they have the hardware. As the increased graphical fidelity makes it that much more satisfying to play through. The first glimpse at just how impressive God of War is comes moments after selecting new game on the main menu. A seamless transition from a static shot of a desolate forest shrouded in fog cuts back to show Kratos chopping a tree down. While you marvel at the staggering detail put into landscape and character models, it's easy to become distracted and forget to press X as it feels more like in an in-game cutscene than a playable moment. The story isn't quite that simple, and around the midway point, just when it seems like you're gaining headway on this mission, the story shifts slightly from this initial goal to something more epic and treacherous, complete with well-timed and often surprising plot developments. Atreus and Kratos constantly grow throughout their adventure together, with dialogue shifting between cold and callous to warm and understanding over the hours spent tracking these beautiful worlds. Not only that Atreus starts to grow snarkier with more quips and backhanded compliments thrown towards his father. Interestingly, this works in tandem to the boy's abilities, which grow to become much more useful as the game progresses. In many ways, they relationship bears some resemblance to Joel and Ellie from The Last of Us, Joel playing the chiseled, cold father figure while the daughter enthusiastically and naively sings of ways to brighten up their relationship strikes more than a few similarities to God of War, and you may find yourself drawing the same comparisons too. The opening hours are incredibly linear, with the basic combat system consisting of a few simple button presses as you begin your journey. Once you get past this initial slow period, though, God of War opens up in the best possible way after one of the most memorable boss fights in the game. While the main structure of God of War remains following a linear path to the main objective, a wealth of options open up that allow for a much more versatile and rewarding experience. The world is still linear to traverse though, which may not be to everyone's taste but it does allow for a lot more environmental details to shine through. Defeating enemies and completing quests, both main and side, grant you experience points that it turns allows you to level up your character. This leveling works twofold. 
you get access to better weaponry and armor, along with more skills and abilities to use in combat. It pays to smash the various vases, wooden crates and anything else lying around too. With Hex Silver, the currency used in game, able to be used at various vendors across the world to buy better weapons and armor as well as items for Atreus. The skills range from simple combos to extra damage done with X-Throwing, through to game-changing moves. One of my personal favorite involves sprinting and slamming an epic axe blast into the ground, temporarily stunning enemies and knocking them back. Each of these moves can be combined in any order with a special skull breaking ability available with the press of a button when the on screen prompts alerts you, usually when the enemy is left with a silver of health. Rage mode is the maximum power equivalent of this, slowing time while you launch a barrage of punches, kicks and axe slashes to enemies. The combat is brutal and genuine skill is needed to prevent cheat deaths, even on the easiest difficulty levels. Dodging an accurate axe throwing helps here too, with the latter incredibly adept at dealing with onslaughts of enemies enemies rushing on your position. The variety in combat and skills is some of the reason Go of War works so well. What begins as a seemingly basic and almost button mashing experience evolves slowly into a deeply refined, intelligent combat system with multiple moves and skills to share things up. As a personal recommendation, I would say to use a controller while playing this, as the controls flow that much more smoothly compared to using a keyboard, especially the combat which can be a bit finicky using a keyboard and mouse. Visually, God of War is absolutely stunning and easily one of the most polite PC experiences out there right now. Snow crumbles and cracks realistically as you walk through knee-high clumps. Tree rustle and blow from gusts of wind and the draw distance is insanely good, especially if you have the hardware to crank this up to its highest level. Likewise, the various worlds feel alien, yet familiar enough to feel like real places. Flora and fauna make sense in these lands, and part of the joy with playing this game comes from exploring and experiencing the various different imaginative landscape. Of course, to reveal too much more about the various worlds and what happens in this game would be bordering on spoiler territory. Yes, I know the game has been out since 2018, but for those avid PC gamers that have steered away from story bits pertaining to Kratos' journey, I'm not about to spoil them here. Suffice to say, there is an immersive amount of work done here, to make each world feel unique and the story beats are just as delightful to experience. Despite the amount of walking on foot, the best scenes in the game occur at sea as you row towards your destination across the beautifully rendered water, telling stories of old and generally bonding with your son. Aesthetically, the game looks fantastic, but it's the sound design and soundtrack that deserves a lot of plaudits here too. The sound effects are crisp and brutal, while the music is fantastic from start to finish. Beer McCreary's score to this game is just as good today as it was all those years back. Overall, it was worth waiting. If you're unlucky to get PS5, PC is the best option to play the game, even though I would still prefer PS5 as console to play on. Thanks for watching, would love to see you in the next one guys, hope you like everything and my work was also worth it.